Ladies and gentlemen, the president of the Country Music Hall of Fame, Marty Stewart. Everybody clap your hands in the house. Come on. Help me sing it, church. Will the circle sing? Be unbroken by and by, Lord, by and by. There's a better home waiting in the sky, Lord, in the sky. That's the anthem of the new Country Music Hall of Fame and Museum. This year, its brand new building became a precious jewel in the glitter of downtown Nashville. And our museum houses more than one million artifacts of American musical history, like, for instance, this guitar that once belonged to Mother Maybelle Carter. Isn't that cool? Yeah. As well as the rotunda, that's our greatest shrine. And now here's my buddy Vince Gill to tell you all about it. Thank you, Marty. Well, this, this is it. We're right here in the Rotunda, the actual Hall of Fame. To celebrate the opening of its new museum, we're inducting 12 new members to the Hall this year. Let me show you around. Okay. These exhibits celebrate the earliest styles of country music, and one of those traditions is the music of brother duets. Beginning in 1931, the Delmore brothers' soft vocal harmonies made them one of the grand old... And Jethro weren't brothers, but they took the country duet to a whole new place. Their wacky style won them the first Grammy Award ever given for comedy. Inspired by the Leuven brothers, Kentucky's Don and Phil Everly had hits with When Will I Be Loved, Kathy's Clown, Bye Bye Love, Let It Be Me, and so many more great records. Last month, Phil Everly accepted the Hall of Fame induction for the team. The Everly Brothers represent the country style called rockabilly, and no one discovered more rockabilly talents than this next Hall of Fame member, producer Sam Phillips, who brought Johnny Cash, Carl Perkins, Roy Orbison, Charlie Rich, Jerry Lee Lewis, and Elvis Presley to fame. This display honors every million-selling album in country music history. The work not only of performers, but the people who produce our records. And Ken Nelson was that person at Capitol Records. He nurtured the Bakersfield styles of Buck Owens and Merle Haggard on the West Coast. Ken is 90 years old as he enters the Country Music Hall of Fame. The Nashville Sound hits at Columbia Records were produced by a British-born gentleman, Don Law. Don worked with such Hall of Famers as Flatt & Scruggs, Lefty Frizzell, Jimmy Dickens, Johnny Cash, Marty Robbins, and Ray Price. The classic Nashville sound records featured background harmonies most often provided by the Jordanaires. The quartet has backed everyone from Patsy Cline to Elvis Presley on hits and is still at it today. Accepting for the group were tenor Gordon Stoker and bass singer Ray Walker. You know, whenever you saw this famous Silver Dollar Pontiac, you knew old Webb Pierce was in town. And tell you what, he could afford to be flashy. Webb Pierce had more number one hits than any other star in the 1950s. In the mid-1970s, a new era was born in Nashville. The leader of an outlaw movement was Texan Waylon Jennings. Waylon brought a new youth audience to country music and sold more than 15 million records. If North Carolina's Don Gibson had done nothing but write sweet dreams and I can't stop loving you, he would deserve Hall of Fame induction. As it happens, Don is also a wonderful singer with more than 80 hits to his credit. The most prolific hit writer of them all is my buddy Bill Anderson. He's written for just about anyone who's ever sung a country song, even me. And as a recording artist, he somehow found the time to write for himself too. There's a lot of emotion on the night of the inductions. That's because this is the pinnacle. It's a place where every country artist dreams of being. This year, there's 12 new dreams represented on these walls. Come see for yourself.